and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And if you haven't noticed, the world is going anti-gay mad. I would argue it's going pro-gay mad in Arizona at the moment. Okay, we'll talk about that. But <laughs> we'll talk a lot about it, that. It's, it's hard to argue that uh, it's not really bad in Uganda, where the president there did sign the draconian anti-gay bill, as there are calls for the United States and uh, to recall our ambassadors uh, from Uganda and Nigeria. You've heard a lot about those. We'll talk a little more about them. But what you haven't heard probably is that Russia was supposed to have an open games, like a gay games, and that is under attack this week. Uh, California's law protecting transgender students, which went into effect in January, seems to be safe from a referendum challenge this year. Probably. Major Almost surely. <laughs> Major League professional sports in the U.S. have gotten their first out gay male athlete, but he's not Michael Sam. Uh, if a king of England uh, marries a man, he cannot become queen. We will explain. The king cannot become queen or the husband cannot the become spouse. queen? The uh, spouse. Okay. Andy is going to review a couple of plays, uh, one that's a play, one that's a musical, both, according to him, to their credit, about recognizable human beings. And I'm going to go see a bunch of plays in London next week, this coming week, and Chris Cooper will be here next week to fill in with Hi, Anne. Chris. Uh, we will welcome you next week. But first, we go to Arizona, where, wow, wow, is my reaction. Well, well f back it up. Uh, first of all, this, okay. this has become the first state legislature where both houses of the legislature have passed one of these religious liberty uh, bills uh, that essentially allow any individual who has sincere religious beliefs uh, not to serve someone, uh, to perform a service for someone, doesn't have to. Not even just individuals, businesses per se. Right. But let's back it up even a little further. Let's talk about the history of this. Now, this really got started when uh, there were a few court cases around the country, specifically about uh, cake makers who would not provide a wedding cake to a same-sex couple, or florists who would not provide flowers for a wedding I'd of a same-sex couple. I'd rather go out of business than have to give you flowers for your wedding because I'd be somehow supporting uh, uh, same-sex marriage, which I object to. Because of my religious Principles. Of course, in some of these cases, in some of the specific cases where suits were brought against these people, other people called in who had other unchristian views or things. For their, They wanted a cake for a pagan celebration or for an unwed mother or these kinds of things. And the guy said, sure, we'll make that cake. The point is, they just hate us. Yeah. So the right-wing uh, powers that be and all these little cabals that exist and get together with each other periodically to devise strategy said, hmm, we have a winner here because even though we lost those court cases because these damn judges, these independent judges who are running everything, have decided that our poor religious people are going to have their religious liberty uh, uh, transgressed so we can prey on public sympathy for them because, of course, it makes perfect sense that you as a business owner should be able to refuse to serve anyone. Of course, that doesn't make perfect sense. If you are in business, you should treat all customers without discrimination. And it's, it's not about having same-sex marriage in your state. It's about having laws that protect people on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity, which many of these places did. Well, that adds another wrinkle that we'll get to. Um, so anyway, the right wing in these power groups that are centered in Washington or elsewhere, not in these individual states, got together and said, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to write a model law that protects business owners and individuals and businesses from having to do any kind of business that offends their religious beliefs. 
that's what we're going to call it anyway. And so that is the law that has been proposed and passed by the Arizona legislature that has been proposed in another eight to ten states around the country. Suddenly all these identical laws show up right. in all these legislatures, and it's all the same thing. It's all from this one central group that's are, writing there, this. There are some uh, variations in these laws. But they're basically uh, but from the same I mean, we told you last thing. week that it passed one house uh, in Kansas, but the other house got alarmed, especially because business leaders get alarmed about these laws. Well, that's what's so interesting. It's like we're running a business and you're telling me my employees can run around saying I have religious objections, that then I don't control them anymore. Well, the interesting thing is that these businesses, for the most part, have anti-discrimination policies. So if suddenly their individual employees can make religious objections to providing service to their customers, they are screwed. Well, they are in really bad shape. One of these bills essentially, uh, you know, allowed you, uh, overrode even private policies within, uh, you know, within a, a business. That uh, all of them do because they, what they do is they enshrine in law the ability of an individual to say my religious objections trump everything. I call it a stand your ground law because what it's really uh, setting up is a legal defense to any charges of discrimination. Right. It's saying you have the right, right to carry your religious objections as you would a gun and use them right. against anybody No, if you feel your religious uh, beliefs are threatened. And But, but again, uh, again, uh, as I've said repeatedly on this show, it's all hypocrisy. Of course. And there's no consistency to it uh, about behaving like a Christian or a good Jew or a good Muslim in any of these things. No. Nope. Uh, it's, it's, it's all about hating us. It is. Because there, there are plenty of people that they disagree with religiously that they'd be happy to provide service to. And none of us are doing anything to them. It's not even in as in the stand your ground laws where you feel physically threatened threatened, it's about, you know, supposedly offending your beliefs, none of which you should be bringing into the business place in the first place. Right. Although the whole point from these right-wing groups is that you should be able to bring your religious uh, beliefs uh, in into the business place to override right. state laws. Now, I watched a lot of the debate in Arizona, and I want to say we had a lot of people on our side who were terrific in mm -hmm. arguing in arguing this. And saying, including and one out gay legislator who stood up and said, you know, I don't like to talk about this usually. And I've tried very hard not to become the, you know, the uh, house gay on this stuff. But really, you're attacking me personally. Now, some of the right wing legislature tours who are pushing this are saying, hey, we're just tweaking religious liberty laws that we've already got, which is a lie, even though those laws aren't so great. Absolutely and, not. And don't forget our own role in this in the gay community where we have embraced in the, not us here because we don't, in the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, a very overbroad uh, religious exemption that other protected classes do not have to put up with. And that's why was, I'm opposed to the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, folks, and I don't support it in its present form because we're sanctifying discrimination against us. I was amused to read one analysis of this Arizona law and the fight going on there that said, some of these laws are written so broadly that, you know, there could be a religious test for janitors at a Catholic hospital. And I thought, yeah, we wrote that law. Yeah. That's the one we're proposing. Yes, it's outrageous. So we need, to, we need to take care of that. And when I get back, we'll, we'll do that. So anyway, what, uh, it appears that uh, this is being taken care of without us. The businesses are standing up. They see the horror of it. The Republican legislators who voted for it, some of them are standing up and saying, Three of them. Oh, well, that's the, No, no, I'm saying it's great. Uh, yeah. They've turned around on the issue. I, 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 I don't know what I was doing. Well, this to me is a real turning point. Yeah. And I also think it fulfills something I've been expecting for a long time. All this argument about there's too much focus on marriage, there's too much focus on marriage. But I've always seen marriage as a wedge, as a marker as if we can uh, push marriage, if we can introduce ourselves to people, if they can get to know us as human beings, uh, then all this will have a ripple effect. And I think that's exactly what's happening. That, uh, and that's what I'm reading in editorials, in letters to the editor, in blogs. Right. People are saying, uh, we're just tired of hating. And now we well, know people as our neighbors and friends and family. They're, they're, and we don't want to do that anymore. There's a sign that has been made up in Arizona that is being put in stores all over the, all over the state that says, open for business 
to everyone, yep. which is a good spirit. Of course, the earlier sign in one restaurant was, we reserve the right not to serve Arizona legislators. <laughs> yeah, but do you have a religious reason for well, that? Well, yes, I, I don't like haters. Uh, How's that? That's against uh, do unto others yes. as you would, uh, against the golden Absolutely. rule. Absolutely. So all of this immediately provoked demonstrations in Phoenix and Tucson and around the state. And, uh, you know, as we tape, there's no final decision from Governor Jan Brewer yet. She is expected to veto this, but hey, Jan, anything could happen. Mitt Romney said, don't sign it. <laughs> Newt Gingrich said, don't sign it. John McCain and Jeff Flake said, don't sign Two -thirds it. Two-thirds of Republicans in Arizona said, don't sign it. American Airlines said, don't sign All it. All the corporations. <laughs> so anyway, these demonstrations have been nice. And we have a little video of some of the demonstrators just talking about uh, what they it's think of the bill. It's want to be Jim Crow law. If they had the ability to put explicit language in there without having an immediate lawsuit, they would but they can't. And so they try to be as vague as humanly possible so that we can't argue with it. But here we are arguing with it nonetheless. How will this affect people if the governor signs it? What could we expect to see? I think we can expect to see a similar backlash as to when SB 1070 um, passed. I mean, like a lot of our signs are mentioning today, we lost a lot of business based on people's negative perceptions of Arizona. And this is just another thing reinforcing the fact that we are a state that doesn't mind excluding people, and we lost lots of revenue based on people canceling their hotels and their conventions here. So even, even if the intention wasn't to discriminate, the intention appears to be so, and we'll receive the economic backlash of that. So you think there's a possibility of a, a boycott of Arizona over this? I definitely think so. And I believe this cements Arizona status as that state, you know, the state that doesn't mind being discriminatory. So Not only doesn't mind, but enjoys, <laughs> enjoys and affirms discriminatory action, like goodbye Super Bowl. Have hope for the next generation. Uh, now, the question, of course, is even if this is vetoed, what does the right wing do next? I think the right wing at this point is in shock at the pushback, whether it's judges in Oklahoma and, and uh, Utah and Kentucky and Virginia well, uh, they already, overturning bans on marriage or, or they, the fight back on this. They already have a new bill uh, in Arizona. Yeah. And it would exempt judges and justices of the peace from having to do same-sex weddings based on sincerely held religious beliefs. So, you know, in New York, for instance, if you are a justice of the peace and you work for the state you, you, and you function in that fashion, you have to, you know, do your job or quit. Uh, they want to exempt those people. Well, that sounds like taking a, a realizing they bit off too much with this, and now they're going to try to do it in smaller bites. Right. We'll see how far that gets them. We certainly have to remain vigilant. This is not uh, going to send them away. But I think it's a huge victory for us, huge. And uh, what we're seeing in the half dozen or more other states where this has come up in Kansas, in uh, Idaho, in Indiana, in Georgia, in Maine, in uh, a number Indiana. of other states. Uh, yes, as I just said. You just said, said Indiana. I okay. did. I think you said Idaho. Um, they, uh, these bills are going down to defeat. They're being withdrawn. They're being... Well, they, uh, saw that, they saw that the Super Bowl was thinking of pulling out of Arizona. They <laughs> said, well, if we ever want to get the Super Bowl, we can't do I'll this. I'll take it. The Super Bowl. <laughs> the holiest of holies in America. Hey, <laughs> we uh, live in a crazy country. But uh, the White House hasn't had any comment on this. Well, they have said that they've been asked about it. And uh, Jay Carney said, I think we all know what the president thinks about LGBT rights. And so. Well, all Jan you know. Brewer has said is it's it's very controversial. Also, the White House doesn't want to comment because Obama and uh, Jan Brewer almost came to blows on the tarmac in Phoenix They're one day. Poking at each other. <laughs> so they figure he's best to stay out of this. Uh, congratulations to all the activists, by the way, because they really turned out big demonstrations about this a couple of times already. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, across the board, congratulations to the corporations. Congratulations to the Democratic legislators. Congratulations to all the uh, uh, media that's actually doing a decent job of 
of covering this. And don't forget, Arizona has a terrible history on this, on all this stuff. Uh, They voted down the Martin Luther King holiday. They uh, did the anti-immigrant bill. You know, so they don't mind being controversial. Here's the other question. You mentioned states that have non-discrimination laws that include sexual orientation and gender identity. That is only approximately half the states in the country. And the fact is that Arizo- in Arizona, you do have a right to discriminate. You don't even need Except this bill. Except in some cities of Arizona, yes. and this would override that. It would. But in a lot of Arizona, you already have the right to discriminate. Yes. And in many states around this country, you have the right to discriminate. So people are offended by this. Does this mean, uh, as they become aware of this situation, that we will see more non-discrimination bills passed as people catch on to the fact that discrimination is legal. Uh, and, uh, and, and will that uh, be a new movement for non-discrimination I bills? I think we need a good, clean federal bill because it's going to be a tough fight state by state, but we, we will continue sure. to try to fight. But you should take a look at the situation in your city and state and see if there is a non-discrimination act and see if you can ride this controversy into a new law we, that's We protective. reported on progress in a couple of towns in Alabama last week. So. Uh, and I got another great Alabama story right. this let's, week. But, let's but, let's, go, but if you really want to be depressed, let's yeah. go to Uganda. Yeah, let's do. So uh, this anti-gay bill that's been kicking around since 2009 used to be called the Kill the Gays bill. Uh, now it's basically uh, enhanced penalties for gayness and anybody who helps a gay person, anybody who doesn't report a gay person to the authorities, everybody can go to jail around this. That's right. Horrible prison sentences. Don't forget, this is a country where uh, life in prison was already the penalty. Uh, and as President uh, Museveni said, um, uh, the British had already done it. Look, last week he said he wasn't going to, he told Desmond Tutu he wasn't going to sign the bill. He said publicly that he was not ready to sign the bill because uh, he needed more scientific information. And he invited, he invited it from around the world, but when it was given to him, it was filtered through his uh, parliamentary people who totally distorted what the science said. Oh, he distorted it too. And so this, a few days ago, he signed the bill. And we got a we picture, picture of him, there, of him of signing the, there, the bill. Of, uh, Yuari uh, Museveni. Uh, yeah. There he is doing doing the deed. You know, now this is a country, and he's really pushing back against the West and saying, yes. mind your own business. I don't tell you what to do. We don't like a lot of things in the West. And uh, we, the we, Putin don't, of we, Africa. we don't say anything. He also said things about cultural standards there, where he said things like, if I kissed my wife of 41 years in public, I would lose elections in Uganda. Uh, oh, but he was much worse than that. He said homosexuals are disgusting. It was all about uh, 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 eating uh, feces. Oh, he, went, was, he, he, was, he went into a whole bunch of sexual oh, acts. It was horrible. But, and of course, now President Obama did condemn this law as odious. John mm-hmm. Kerry took it on and said we're going to reevaluate our relationship, although we haven't recalled our ambassadors as groups like HRC, Human Rights Watch, and uh, American Jewish World Service have called for... At least a temporary recall. They say... Well, a recall means you you take it seriously. You actually physically call the person home. You sit them down and talk about what are our relations going to be going forward. It's not a break of diplomatic relations. The State Department says that the relationship is under review. Now, meanwhile, the Netherlands has frozen $10 million in aid to Uganda that was specifically targeted for the legal system because they do not want to support prosecutions of gay people right. or friends and family. The, the Ugandan uh, gay activists on the ground are saying, don't cut aid, uh, but although most, most countries, like Britain, funnel all their aid through non-governmental organizations well, and Denmark, multilateral. Well, Denmark and Norway are moving their grants that went through the government directly to non-governmental organizations. Right. Now, the big thing, of course, here, the big hope here is that they can go to court even the Ugandan constitution should, should knock this down if they've got any guts. It's certainly unconstitutional under their own constitution. Uh, that's, what, that's the uh, hope there. But well, that the- takes me back to Arizona for a second. The question is whether any of these laws pr- uh, proposed by the right wing for so-called religious liberty would stand up to constitutional review. It's always a fine line. I mean, every human rights law has a little bit of a, little bit of a religious exemption. They don't tell churches... You know, Catholics, you've got to ordain women as priests, so 
would be a good idea, but they don't, you wouldn't enforce that legally. So there's always a debate about that when, the, when a case arises. And they're, uh, the Supreme Court's looking at all that in terms of contraception and who pays for it. I think what Peter Tatchell is calling for, he's calling, take all the seven or eight people who were really behind this, the president and the, uh, the authors of the law, uh, freeze their assets mm -hmm. and put a tra international travel ban on them. That's something that could be done Do you think they have private zoos like the Ukrainian president and uh, a restaurant in the <laughs> form of a pirate ship in their <laughs> private grounds? I don't know. <laughs> Well, uh, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Samantha Power, met with Frank Mugisha, the head of sexual minorities Uganda, uh, the uh, very out activist there who's been on this television program, I'm, I'm proud to say. Um, he said that uh, Museveni has sold us out for the votes of his party. This all is all seen as a political move by Museveni. Well, to, it's very politically popular. There's yeah. very little dissent over this in the country. But meanwhile, we bear the price. And yes, that was we're seen, the scapegoats. That was seen immediately by the cover of one of their oh. tabloid newspapers there, Let's Red up Pepper, there. Uh, which uh, on the next day had this uh, front page story, Exposed, exposed Uganda's... 200 top homos named, and then they run pictures of them. So some of them, I mean, they're already being attacked. We've told you about what happened in Nigeria, where mobs went after uh, suspected gay men and yanked them out of their homes and stoned well, them and beat them. And that's what happens when you, you pass a law, you sanction that. You, it happens in Russia. It's happening yes. in Nigeria. It's now going to happen in Uganda. A different newspaper in Uganda did this a couple of years ago and they put the top 100 homos, and David Cato was one of them, the leading gay activist, and he was subsequently murdered in his, in his home. Yep. Uh, it's very, so so it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's, you weep for Africa. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, I mean, it's, it's uh, this is mostly uh, sub-Saharan Africa, where this is most intense, this, this anti-gay stuff. You try to say to them, hey, these were British colonial wars, don't you want to be African? But they say homosexuality is un-African. Well, those who are, think they're going to retain power by saying that say that. Yeah, but again, this resonates with the people. I mean, you, Sure, and you, it resonates with the Russian people, and it resonates with a lot of people in this country, it too. It does. It does. I've talked a, to some of them. Yeah, it's an easy uh, get. So next week, here in New York and around the world, there are going to be a couple of days of action uh, on behalf of people in uh, Uganda and Nigeria. On Wednesday, March 5th, I did not supply this to our control room for Chiron, but on March 5th, there is a Uganda Worldwide Day of Action. Check out Facebook. There are Facebook pages on this, and on, uh, and that'll be at the Uganda Mission midday lunchtime on Wednesday the fifth, and then on Friday the seventh uh, at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Nigerian Mission at Second Avenue and 45th Street. There is a worldwide day of action on behalf of. Nigerian LGBTs. There's already been a big demo in uh, London uh, on behalf of Nigerian LGBTs. We have a picture of that. Uh, Peter Tatchell, you mentioned, uh, works with a lot of African activists and uh, they showed up at the Nigerian mission in London to uh, object to the homophobia in uh, oh. Try to go to their action there on the 5th and the 7th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's hopscotch a little more international news. Uh, oh. uh, in Zambia, good news, an activist was acquitted of soliciting for immoral acts. He's the guy who went on TV and said, just said you need uh, gay rights in Zambia to be able to fight the AIDS epidemic. And he was hauled off and arrested and charged. But he's now been acquitted. So that's good. Uh, and in Iran, a pop star named Gugush has uh, put out a new video uh, called Heaven, uh, Behesht. Uh, she, it's a really nice video. And uh, she, it's about a persecuted lesbian couple. And she's in a nightclub singing in the couples uh, at the uh, table and shows them in their lives. Uh, conservatives called it obscene and anti-revolutionary. Well, this is one of the reasons things are changing so much. We used, to, we used to have to depend on other people to do media about us, and now we make our own. And yes. that has changed the equation 
quite radically. I have to correct something I said in last week. You, uh, we were talking about when marriage was becoming legal in England and Wales, and I said Scotland too, and you said the same time, and I said I think so. I was wrong. It's a little later for March Scotland. March 29th in the United Kingdom. So in anticipation. Fall in. Uh, yeah. So in an well, you know Scotland. the reason it. You know I couldn't understand why they passed the law and they just didn't start it right away, as they often yeah. do in in, yeah. in this country. But they have to go through laws going back to the 1200s over there, and that's what they did. Because they got to see especially what to do with royalty. And it turns out, it turns out... Don't they get to make their own decisions? It turns out that we, well, they can, you can do what you want to do. But it turns out that we're less than equal when it comes to this. And essentially, not get when, when a person in the aristocracy or in the royalty gets, gets married to someone of the same sex, they don't, they don't get the titles that they would have gotten otherwise. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly, if the king uh, marries a man, the spouse is not going to be the queen. Or the prince of Wales marries a man, that's not going to be the princess of Wales. But they don't say what they are going to be. They shouldn't be the queen and the princess. I know, They're but what should women. they be? Should they, well, so is the prince of Wales' king husband. <laughs> well, see, I, in, in reading about this story, and it's online. Mr. King. It, it's whatever. Now... It's an interesting dilemma. Now, the, the Catholic Archbishop in the United Kingdom uh, has been made a cardinal, and he was somebody who once defended gay masses in Soho, the London neighborhood, but then the Vatican stepped in under Benedict and said, no more of that. Mm -hmm. So he's supposed to, but, did, and did you know in reading all about this that women can be cardinals? Uh, the Cardinals was a lay group formed in Rome way back when, and that's originally how it all got started with the red clothes and all that kind of stuff, electing the Pope. So it's, it's not theologically impossible. Who cares? Not me. Uh, but there is a continuing dust up in the Dominican Republic over the U.S. ambassador there who's gay and brought his husband yeah. to the Dominican Republic versus the uh, Dominican... Uh, representative to the Vatican, who's very offended by all this. Well, it turns Does out... Does he have sincere religious objections? You, uh, you tell me. <laughs> but the diplomatic corps uh, was supposed to have a meeting with the president of the Dominican Republic. It was canceled after the dean of the corps, who is the ambassador from the Vatican to uh, the Dominican Republic, refused to invite the husband of the U.S. ambassador to this diplomatic reception. So this is the thing. You know, everybody <laughs> praises this new pope. Who am I to judge about yeah. gay people and things? But he hasn't done anything. He could be saying something, most importantly, about Uganda, because half the Christians Absolutely. in an in a 85% Christian country yep. are Catholic. Yep. He could be saying, this is, this cannot stand. He could step into the whole St. Patrick's Day parade controversy here and say, of course you should let gays marry. Who am I to judge? <laughs> But we never hear from you, Francis, when push comes to shove. No, we And you get a lot of credit, but you don't do anything. We appreciate your humility, your work with the yes. poor. Oh, yes. All, well, uh, all in favor of that. But, you know, there are a few other things you could be talking about. More matter, less art. All right. Back to Russia. Yeah. Unless you, uh, you thought we were finished with that because the Olympics were over. Oh, no. Well, so, as, as Kiev burned, the IOC forbade Ukrainian athletes from wearing black armbands. Some of them just went home, the, the, the Ukrainian love athletes. Love that. Love the Ukrainian athletes who left the Olympics and went home to join the protesters. Uh, so here's what's going on now. So we had the Olympics, and then we're going to have the Paralympics a week after. But in between, uh, the gay population of Russia was going to hold the second annual or second whatever. Open games. Open games. They didn't even call it the gay games, although that's what it is, you know. They don't want to get in any more trouble with us than the, we got in with the IOC when we called them the Gay Olympics way back when. They're supposed to take place over about, uh, over this long weekend. Eight sports, uh, elements of education, advocacy, culture, entertainment, but they were going to abide by the propaganda law. Uh, no one under 18 allowed to participate, holding them indoors where no one could see them, uh, concealing. <laughs> Winter the, Olympics indoors? Concealing the purpose from the venue owners. Yeah. And uh, no rainbows, secret locations, security guards, well, and yet... It couldn't be that secret because four <laughs> of the venues canceled the contracts and the Hilton Hotel... Now, has anybody called Hilton on this? I don't know. Uh, the Hilton Hotel said, you're, you're unbooked. Yeah. 
so we're following that, and we had this all started to break yesterday as we're taping. We haven't heard the update of whether any of this will take place or it's all been canceled. But this is really you. You know, we knew that things were going to get worse after the Olympics left town. We just didn't know so soon. Yeah, the Paralympics haven't even happened yet. Look, if Putin can be calling for demonstrators to be shot in Kiev while the Olympics were on, his shamelessness knows no bounds. Well. Speaking of shameless, yeah. Johnny Weir, I mean, made so many stupid statements about how great it's been for him in Russia and absolutely nothing bad has happened to him and he's just happy. I will give him credit, however, uh, after all the Ukrainian stuff started, he put his hair in a Ukrainian braid. Well, a little rainbow pin might have been nice, too. Yes. Uh, well, he and Tara Lipinski. Could he have been, more, and I use the word advisedly, could he have been any more flamboyant? <laughs> No, he couldn't, but he could have had something that uh, yes. read, you know, not just uh, flamboyant gay, but maybe politically gay. He and his uh, announcing partner, Tara Lipinski, were the big, big hit of the games yeah. for NBC. I heard very little of them because I wasn't watching much of this because right. uh, I just found it boring. And But what I did hear of him... Boring. I didn't watch. I, I don't know where they got their big Well, reputation. Frank Rich, who used to be at the Times, now with uh, New York Magazine, said that NBC's coverage, ignoring the Russian crackdowns in Russia and in the Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, was akin to Lenny uh, Riefenstahl's glorification of the <laughs> Berlin Olympics of 1936. And that Te was a good movie. Technic <laughs> it was a very good movie, if you ever can catch it. Yeah. Technic, but it's chilling. Technically impressive, but morally obtuse. Well, NBC did something like 1,500 hours of coverage. And when you add up a few seconds here and a few minutes there of any mention of uh, gay stuff or repression, that added up over uh, 16 days to two hours. Right. And most of it was on M MSNBC now, of the I, Melissa Harris how Perry did, show. How did all the gay activists who went over fare <laughs> over there? Well, Masha Gessen, who we had on the show, <laughs> uh, who had lived in Russia and has fled Russia with her children, she wrote an article in Slate accusing the international LGBT rights movement as failing Russian gays at mm -hmm, Sochi. Mm -hmm. Never once meant, but she doesn't mention what Queer Nation did, and well, you can talk about more that. More on that in a moment. And uh, she was part of that. She used to go to the meetings. Uh, so, uh, she's coming back. She wrote us a note saying she's going to be active with Queer well, Nation wish, again when I she gets off I wish she had mentioned all that, but... Uh, well, what, she, she what she is saying is that Athlete Ally and these groups went over and really didn't do much. Nothing. Uh, and they did go over there, and they did nothing. Uh, so we here uh, in New York continued our demonstrations against NBC and against Russia and everything else. Uh, so we really were angry at NBC throughout this for their inadequate coverage. You know, there was a mention, Bob Costa said, you know, one thing here and one thing there. And those were good, but they were, uh, that was it. And they had so many hours when they could have no, been doing stuff. It's a buzzkill. <laughs> exactly. So we decided to visit the Today Show towards the end of the Olympics, <laughs> just to remind them, because Kathy Lee and Hoda were still broadcasting live from New York. Uh, so we took advantage of that to go visit the Today Show. Let's put up the first picture. This is Queer Nation at the Today Show in New York with our big uh, rainbow banner saying, Boycott homophobia. One of Gilbert Baker's many banners in this yes, fight. Yes, he's done a brilliant job. And if you go to the second picture, you can read the signs. There, gay bashing is not an Olympic sport. Don't, Don't buy Putin's lies. There's our friend Chef Wanan and the, Mark Black the, and uh, somebody we recognize in between. Yeah, with white hair, the ubiquitous Chef and Mark. Uh, and here is the reaction we got from Kathy Lee Gifford to our showing up outside. <laughs> <laughs> she looked me right in the eye as I was standing there holding that banner. And uh, the first time, I'm waving and smiling at Kathy Lee because I have a little soft spot in my heart for Kathy Lee. And she just glares at me and won't respond and walks away and looks bad. Because and, you're a buzzkill. <laughs> and then she comes back a few <laughs> minutes later from whatever segment it was. And I'm still waving and smiling at Kathy Lee. And she looks at me and she continues to glare. And then she just gives me a little wave. <laughs> 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 so, mission accomplished. And then we went to uh, Grand Central this weekend yes. because the USOC was winding up on the last day of the Olympics with a, 
a road to Sochi event at Grand Central, so we went and wrestled the, with the cops with these banners and uh, well, had a tussle with seriously, them. going forward, we can't, you know, we're, we're worried about Africa, we're worried about Arizona, we're worried about a lot of places, but we can't abandon uh, Russian LGBT folks. Absolutely not. Uh, and a, a tiny bit of good news. The woman, Lena Klimova, who had been uh, arrested and prosecuted for putting up a website for LGBTQ youth, yes. uh, she was exonerated by the court. So sometimes you can win in court. Yeah. All right. All right. Back to the United States of America. Well, something we thought, I think, that wasn't going to happen was that Jason Collins, who came out after... Uh, as, a, as an out NBA player after the season was over. He's mm -hmm. an older guy. Uh, didn't think he was going to get picked up, but he was hired by the Brooklyn Nets basketball team. He's the first out male to play a major professional sport. That is history. Uh, it is. And uh, of the big four, people will say Robbie yes. Rogers and uh, soccer, but it's football, basketball, hockey, and baseball. And so he's the, you know, they, we know people who played all those sports who came out after they played, but uh, he has now been hired on a 10-day contract. Uh, the rules are that he'll play that, then they can give him another 10-day contract, and then they have to decide whether to sign him for good or let him go. Right. They won their first game with him playing. That yeah, was a big great. deal. And, it, you know, and, and we're assuming Michael Sam will get picked up by some NFL team. Uh, maybe Hope some, so. maybe some are nervous of had. Of course, there's this uh, uh, crazy lobbyist. I call him a crazy lobbyist, but he's from one of the fastest growing lobbying firms in Washington. Oh, this is going nowhere. Well, who, of course, it's going nowhere. But he actually proposed a, a, a legislation that would ban gays from the NFL. Uh, we are losing our decency as a nation, and do you want your son showering with a gay? Uh, well, well, maybe. <laughs> every day happens. Every day. And, in fact, in the midst of this, we mourn the death this week of Roy Simmons at age 57. Uh, uh, he had pneumonia, complications of HIV. Uh, he played for the New York Giants. And he, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, Giants and the Redskins. He came out after he uh, stopped playing. He had a hard time. He had a lot of self-loathing. He had a lot of drug and alcohol abuse. And he died wrote a book young. about it. He yeah. wrote a book about yeah. it. Yeah, but he was one of the heroes who did come out uh, in the days when it was uh, almost never done. Right. He was the second to come out after Dave Cope. Wow. I remember, and I remember when that happened a long player. time ago. Yep. Um, in California, the right-wing attempt to put the new law protecting transgender students uh, on the ballot has failed to qualify. Uh, you know, the conservatives are still you know, trying to go, go after the disqualified signatures and try to get them reinstated. But that's a very long shot at this point. And the law's been in effect since yeah. January 1st, and we hear every day reports of schools putting in policies to protect transgender students and their rights, uh, and that's a good thing. And so it seems to be taking effect without any real problem. We made some progress on the St. Patrick's Day controversy in New York. We've been barred from the parade for all these years. Well, Melissa Mark Viverito, who's the new speaker of the city council, she said, uh, I'm pulling the city council banner from that parade. Uh, if individual council members want to march, they can. There's only a handful that do. Uh, but uh, that's a new thing. We're still trying to get the police and fire and everybody else not to allow members to march in uniform because... All these politicians are acknowledging it's a discriminatory parade. Well, then it's a disgrace for uniform personnel to be marching in it. It is, but uh, there's a leadership factor operating here. For the last 20 years, we've had Giuliani and Bloomberg as the mayors, and oh. we couldn't make an inch of progress on any of this because they didn't, wouldn't have anything to do with us, and they were all in bed with the archdiocese. Then we have a new mayor who is progressive and who says, who never has marched himself. and who, In this one. Yes. Uh, and who says he's not going to march. And that suddenly becomes yes. a reason for everybody to get on board because they want to be his allies. And Mark, uh, Melissa Mark Viverito is his ally as the council speaker. And thus she can bring along uh, most right. of the council and make that official decision. Yeah. So that's a great thing. Meanwhile, the uh, Brendan Faye St. Patrick's Parade for All takes place this weekend. 
uh, in Sunnyside, Queens on Sunday at 2 p.m. You can uh, go to the stpatsforall.com website uh, to get the details of exactly And he's where got that Irish drag queen who's been viral on uh, on the internet uh, who made Patty. that forgetting the name yeah. I apologize yes. but who's made this fantastic speech uh, because in Ireland because uh, uh, Patty ac whatever, accused uh, some politicians there of being homophobic and RTE the R Irish television station paid them off because uh, they're saying, oh, if we're against same-sex marriage, that doesn't mean we're homophobic. So we've been libeled, and you should pay us. Libeled? You're, you know. <laughs> if the shoe fits. <laughs> In Maryland, the trans rights bill passed the Senate Committee 8 to 3 and will be considered by the full chamber. It's expected to pass. The House of Delegates passed a similar bill. In 2011, they have to reconcile these things. The legislature in Illinois will consider a no conversion therapy for minors bill. This is an idea that's spreading around the country. But in New Jersey, the ultra-Orthodox Agudath Israel Social Service Group is pushing back against the curb on conversion therapy for minors. Now, this is a group that gets millions of dollars in city and state contracts in this state and they're they're taking all this anti-gay stuff i think it's an outrage uh as we uh, celebrate our victories and ponder our losses we better watch out for a new right-wing group scott lively who is i think the worst monster in terms of creating these anti-gay hysteria bills around the world he, he he's went an american to evangelical he's not even a, not even a minister went to Russia, went to Uganda, is being prosecuted in Springfield, Mass., for starting all this stuff yes. in Uganda. Uh, for, he, for interfering with foreign, foreign affairs, essentially. Uh, in in uh, abrogation of U.S. policy. Law. Yeah. Uh, so he and Peter LaBarbera and uh, a million other right-wing folks announced this week a new international coalition for family values to specifically and overtly to oppose the global LGBT agenda. Uh, they support the anti-propaganda laws in Russia and think everyone should copy them. Uh, this is a this well, is a very public push on their part. These are people when you would press them in the American debate, should the sodomy laws be reinstated and people be locked up again for that, they would say yes. Yes, absolutely. You know. They would agree with the uh, the president of Uganda. They wrote the law for the president of Uganda, right. and they are coming back around. But there is hope in Alabama. Uh, at Greenville High School, where they first said it would only allow boy-girl traditional couples at the prom, there was an outcry from students, and the interim uh, superintendent uh, abolished the discriminatory policy. The principal had put out a memo uh, with this policy of only traditional couples, and this interim school superintendent is this wonderful woman. Uh, you uh, look up Greenville, Alabama, and this uh, Greenville High School prom. This superintendent is fantastic. She said that this uh, traditional couples policy was discriminatory and a violation of the uh, school board policies of non-discrimination. Uh, she's enormously eloquent on this and it was so heartwarming to see this uh, coming I take, out of I take back everything I, I bad I said about Alabama. Well, not everything. <laughs> I'm pretty hard on New York too. And the school system of Kilgore, Texas uh, have has now paid $77,000 to a young lesbian who at the age of 16 was outed to her mother by the school in 2009. Uh, they, they took her into a separate room. She was on the softball team. They grilled her. You they, can't be too careful. <laughs> and, she, and then they called her mother. And you can't do this. Uh, students have a right to privacy. And uh, so they're paying $77,000, and they have to do a, an annual training of faculty about the, what the right policy don't, and but privacy don't, is. Don't but they're angry about it, and they're saying, well, we're not changing anything. They were acting on their sincere religious beliefs. Exactly. Well, Mark Sickles was acting on his beliefs. He's a member, a Democratic member of the House of Delegates. He's actually the chair of the Democratic caucus, but it's Republican-dominated. Well, he finally publicly came out, partly in response to vicious anti-gay remarks Where on the floor. Where is this? Virginia, I'm sorry, I apologize. Virginia, uh, uh, the old dominion. Um, and uh, because people on the floor were saying things like we were unfit to be parents, so yeah. that made him speak out. On Good. the other hand, in South Carolina, a House Budget Committee has cut 
uh, money funding to two colleges because they assigned LGBT books to all incoming freshmen. One of them was Alison Bechtel's Fun Home. No. <laughs> now, what is the so-called Victory Fund doing? You know, they support out gay candidates, yep. technically of both parties, and they're desperate for Republican candidates, so they have endorsed two guys who are running in Massachusetts and somewhere else in, uh, for, for, for the House. Uh, uh, where's the other one? Um, New Hampshire. But the thing is, these, these guys, and they're good on gay issues, but they're, they're uh, running against uh, supportive Democrats. And I, th all that's going to do is add to the Republican majority where exactly. we can't get anything passed. And they go so, to Congress, so, they vote for John Boehner as the Speaker of the House, and it, they vote with the Republicans. It's just disastrous. Well, you know, theoretically you have a long-term strategy where you overturn the, uh, the right-wing Republicans. Uh, do I think this is no. the way right. to do it? No, but that's what they okay. want. Well, meanwhile, the uh, CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Committee, which is a really right, you know, Ann Coulter goes there every year and makes obnoxious speeches and Sarah Palin. Uh, and they've been fighting with right-wing gay Republicans, and they have now invited Go Proud back in, uh, but only as guests. They can't sponsor. They can't have a booth. Right. Um, and the co-founder of Go Proud, Chris Barron, who is <laughs> no progressive, uh, has quit the board of Go Proud, is claiming that they have uh, done an unconditional surrender to the forces of bigotry. Well, we're running out of time, and we better move along here because okay. uh, can we get to some marriage news? Sure, let's do. Well, I mean, let's. What, we but first, I have to thank the activists in Boise, Idaho, who are continuing to escalate their demonstrations. Yes at the legislature. They've now gone there. They took 100 people for their fifth demonstration demanding a non-discrimination bill. This is, you know, the other side of what's happening in Arizona. It's got to happen everywhere. The big marriage news comes from Illinois, where uh, under the legislation that was passed in December, it was, uh, they, marriages were supposed to start June 1st, but federal judge Sharon Johnson Coleman said uh, in Cook County they can get started now and other county clerks may follow suit. And uh, so they're moving along. And a big trial is open in Michigan. This is uh, like the Prop 8 trial in California. This is the next big trial on marriage rights uh, brought by a lesbian couple, started as an adoption trial, moved to a, a, a basic marriage trial. All the, uh, they're doing a full trial on marriage, parenting, everything. All the right-wing authors of the Regneris uh, study. The that discredited yep. Regneris study. Uh, uh, coincidentally, the Williams Institute has <laughs> issued a new study uh, that found that two lesbian mothers are that are better than a male oh, female okay. couple. I always knew that the kids better. have higher self esteem, fewer conduct problems. They're about the same on substance use and relationships with their parents. Uh, the trial is about whether there is a rational state interest in restricting marriage to opposite sex couples. This Michigan case is the one to yep. watch at the moment. The uh, Attorney General of the United States, Eric Holder, very outspoken this week, saying that uh, speaking to attorney generals from around the country, and said, look, uh, you know, if you believe that these anti-same-sex marriage laws are discriminatory, you are not obligated to defend them. Well, we knew that. Uh, you remember we told you Edie Windsor was at the White House dinner for the French yeah. president. Well, we have an actual picture. Uh, she was the only one invited into the Oval Office for a meeting privately with the president. Of course, it looks like Gulliver and the <laughs> Lilliputian there with the camera angle. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they make a cute couple. They do. Yeah. And Edie brought her new uh, uh, woman friend to the um, uh, uh, party. The New Mexico legislature ignored uh, in its, as its session ended, a bill to overturn marriage rights there. We're safe there for the moment. The Oregon mm -hmm. Attorney General will not defend the anti-marriage law there, as Eric Holder said uh, she doesn't have to. And there's a new campaign uh, by Freedom to Marry. They're pouring a million bucks into southern states to promote marriage equality there, uh, starting with an ad by legendary uh, Congressman John Lewis. Yes. Take a look at a little of that. I'm Congressman John Lewis from Atlanta, Georgia. I fought too hard and too long against race and color, not to stand up and speak up against discrimination against our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters. I see 
the right to marriage as a civil rights issue. You cannot have rights for one segment of the population, or one group of people, and not for everybody. Civil rights and equal rights must be for all of God's children. No government, state or federal, have the right to discriminate against someone because of the color of their skin or sexual orientation. I see marriage equality as a step, a necessary for completing the lone boy brother. Thank you very much, you uh, John can, Lewis. You can see the whole thing on Freedom to Marry's website or on YouTube. A uh, true moral authority. And, and we already know about the campaign for Southern Equality that's doing a lot of direct action around the South. Uh, we told you about this story in Alabama. There's a lot of hope everywhere. Yep. And, it's catching uh, on. <laughs> but several uh, judges in uh, the southeast corner of New Mexico are stop doing, stopping doing marriages for anybody because they don't want to marry us. But, you know, it's consistent. That's okay. okay. Uh, AIDS news. Well, a disturbing study from the University of Westminster uh, in London uh, where uh, two people contract HIV every day. They found that eight, to t eight out of ten young men have had unprotected sex with a stranger. Ninety-four percent are more likely to have unprotected sex with a good-looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> the authors of the study say bareback porn has encouraged a lot of, uh, normalized a lot of unprotected sex blah, blah, et cetera. So folks, you know, uh, watch out. Well, here's the most disturbing thing. In 2012, there were 3,250, 3,250 3, infections of gay and bisexual men. That's the highest ever in the history of the epidemic in the uh, United Kingdom. That's disturbing. And in Stone Mountain, Georgia, uh, an HIV positive man got 10 years in prison for having sex with a woman without disclosing that he had HIV. Uh, she remains negative. So nothing in the trial examined the fact that he did not transmit HIV to right. her. She claimed she, uh, finding out that she'd had sex with him when he was HIV positive, left her depressed, immobile, she couldn't care for her kids. Her kids got screwed up. They dropped out of college. She's still on treatment for HIV, Even although she is negative. Just and she can't eat food off the plates of her friends and family. I remember some of these early cases where people would, say, including like Rock Hudson's ex-lover, yeah. saying, oh, I, I won't be out of the woods for 20 years or yeah. something. And you feel liar. Exactly. Uh, you know what he was convicted of? Reckless HIV. Reckless HIV. What is that? Well, who's really being reckless is uh, the state of Louisiana and Blue Cross Blue Shield because they're trying to, they've been rejecting payments from people with AIDS who get third party payments from the, from the government. Right. Well, a federal judge said that that's got to stop, at least for now, while I look at this. It's, uh, the order expires in 14 days. Lambda filed a class action suit, so yeah. uh, that's what that's about. And in Delaware, the uh, Division of Public Health closed the True Heart ha Tattoo Shop in on Kirkwood Highway in the Ellesmere area, finding unsterile equipment, and they're warning uh, people should be tested for HIV and hepatitis. Right. All right, entertainment news. Well, you know how I praise the play Buyer and Seller with Michael Urie? He's taking it on the road. It's going to be in Chicago and Los Angeles and in Los Angeles and D.C. and Toronto. So he's never going to stop doing this role, but they're going to keep it going in New York with someone else. I found it only mildly amusing. I like, well, well, it's obviously catching on. Yeah. I saw two plays that I liked very much this week at the mm -hmm. Paper Mill Playhouse, the other Josh Cohen. We got a picture of the two Josh Cohens there. One's the narrator, one plays him in life. This is one of these, uh, he's a self-described loser trying to survive New York and find love, full of zany characters, including... Several Neil Diamonds. So it sounds terrible, right? <laughs> but it was so good. It was, he, he, he kept, is very witty and charming and everything, and I just loved it. Uh, I want to direct people to the Brooklyn Museum for uh, their last chance over the next week or so to see the uh, ex exhibition of Lorraine Hansberry's <sighs> Letters when does to it the close? Ladder. Uh, sometime in the next week or two. Oh, damn it, I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> We should tell me sooner. I'll double check that. Well, uh, look right. it up. Brooklyn Museum. Uh, it's supposed to be really fascinating. And you only have to give what you want to give at the Brooklyn Museum. Yeah. Okay. Other play? Well, yeah, I saw at the, you know, I love the Mint Theater, the Mint 
theater. They revive things that don't get done very often, well-made plays from the, from the earlier part of the, of the 20th century. This one was called London Wall, 1931, by John Van Druten. Do you yes, know him? Yes, sure. A gay man. the turtle. And bell, book, and candle, and all those things. So uh, this focuses on the changing roles of women in an office environment. Mm -hmm. And is, it's, it's very funny. It's very good. And the cast, every single one of them just seems to nail their roles. And th that's what I loved about it. Uh, I have excellent news for the fans of America's Next Top Model. Yes. Miss J. Alexander is coming back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> this means nothing to Andy or no. to probably most of you. No. But for those of us who watch the show, this is very, very good news. Oh, and how do you feel about Alec Baldwin bowing out of public life? Uh, he attacked. Bye. He attacked. Bye bye. He attacked in, in this article in New York Magazine where he's supposedly bowing out of public life. He attacked Andrew. Sullivan and Ann Anderson Cooper as part of the gay department of justice. That's bad. If only. Uh, and he called Rachel Maddow a phony. Hey, if one of my ancestors was the third chief justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, can I be a Supreme Court uh, justice in the gay department of justice? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> I would you know, like to be. You have my permission. Uh, we might as well also run the uh, picture of what, what happened in Philadelphia. They dedicated the, uh, the had the ribbon cutting for the, uh, I think it's the John Anderson yes. Senior Center, yes. a senior residence place. The LGBT friendly senior Everybody residence. Everybody was there. Senator Casey, Mayor Nutter, all these people were Former there. Former Governor Rendell. Mark Siegel, of course, is the publisher of the paper down there, the gay paper, Philadelphia Gay News. And he was sort of the driving force behind this with a lot of other people. And they did this with government money, folks, which means that we could be lobbying our governments to do it for us. Now, simultaneously, we're old. simultaneously there was a report released in New Jersey about discrimination against uh, older LGBT people in senior housing and what a problem it can be. I hope These it places... doesn't happen here in the gay senior housing. <laughs> Well, you know, you can't discriminate, so it is not the gay senior housing. That's true. It's the gay-friendly senior housing. That's true. Uh, keep an eye on that. But, yeah, we could use a lot more of that. So you're going to London. You're going to see a lot of plays. Yeah, I mean, Simon Russell Beale is doing King Lear. Uh, by the way, you can over here in Brooklyn, you can already see A Doll's House, which I saw uh, over there last time, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, and a couple of gay things, including uh, Russell Tovey, who's the British guy in Looking. Yes. Which is getting a little better, but not a lot. Yeah. Um, but he's in I a play. I just don't care about any He's of those in a play people. called The Pass, and it's about. Is he the a, one with the big ears? Yes. Is the boss? Yes. Yeah. He's, uh, and he was in The History Boys. He is um, a, a show, it's a show about a very famous uh, soccer star who comes out. Mm -hmm. So we'll see that at the Royal Court, among other things. Why, that could be and a documentary. Sheila Delaney's. Uh, Taste of Honey is being revived there. I hope the weather is decent there. Uh, well, there's always rain, but it's it's not as cold as it is here yeah. in the polar vortex. And I will be happy to spend a week with Chris Cooper here at yes. the desk. And I know he has a lot of fans watching, so you can look forward to that. Yes. And, and, uh, and oh, and we uh, Free Speech has a pledge drive coming up for three weeks, so our schedule will change a little. Starting later. Uh, uh, write to andyhumadaol.com to get the latest on that. And uh, Chris Cooper and I will see you next week. Right. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you in a few weeks.